open your speech with a humorous note, the audience will never leave you. Believe me, and they will not leave you for that speech. They will not leave you for the speech for your spe future speeches as well. One of the youth leaders uh, was pretty humorous last time. The next time, believe me, when he comes on stage, people will expect the same kind of humor, and they will be eager to listen to him. Humorous opening. Shall I try an example? It is risky, my dear friends. Sometimes it so happens that you may think it is humorous, but it may turn out to be very serious. <laughs> let me take a risk and let me come up with an example. Right at the entrance, I was met by a terrorist. I was confronted by a terrorist who put a gun on me and said, you have to kill all the youth leaders today. I said, yes sir, please give me some bomb. Why do you need a bomb? All you do is go and deliver a speech. Poor things will die just like that. <laughs> Thank you, it paid up. I took a risk and it paid up. The other method of opening up is, some of you youth leaders already did that. Sing a song. Come up with some act. Youth leader Nihar Chitnis came up with a burn, you know, a, a fire act. You can do the act in the beginning. Something like that. Be innovative come up with some other opening that appeals the audience. That is the opening part. We then come to the body. And when we come to the body, it reminds me of my speech when I crafted the first speech and went to my mentor and I displayed my speech. He read, oh, the opening is okay. Let me see what's in your body. I said, sir, two hands and two legs. <laughs> he looked at me and said, oh, you forgot your empty head also. <laughs> So, the body of the speech is the part where we describe what is in our speech. Our main idea, our main statement, we elaborate. It should be descriptive and it should be connected to the opening. Just the way I mentioned mangoes and hard work, it should be connected. Mangoes is not connected to hard work. So, your opening and the body should be connected to each other. Then how can we, in the body, again, as we mentioned, you elaborate the main idea or statement. And we should state examples. When we state, say examples, say for example, Napoleon, with his hard work, with his, he did that. We can state it as a positive example and we should also come up with some negative example. Say for example, somebody is not working hard, you find an example who didn't work hard, could be yourself or could be anybody, a negative example. Then comes, tell a story and make the point. Here I would like to ask a couple of Toastmasters or parents, why is it that story, we, we ask people to tell a story and make a point. Why is it Why is that we ask them to tell stories? Can anybody say? It will be appealing. Pardon? Appealing to the audience. It is appealing indeed, yes. But why stories? Stories have lingered in our memory for a long time, yes. And one other thing is that stories, Human being, we are, the, we are blessed with one characteristic. We, we are curious. And in, in a story, we always say, what happened next? What happened next? Let me tell you a simple story. There was a prince and a princess. What happened next? Oh, well, they got married. Oh, poor prince. Well, what happened next? Oh, well, they had a boy. Oh, well, the boy was stupid like Rajiv Pillai. Oh, well, then what happened next? Oh, well, they had another boy. He was as smart as Dr. George. And then what happened next? So see that what happened next, it keeps us glued to the speech. So tell, the, tell a story, make the point. The other way that we, that we can do is, okay, this is one thing which is very important. Youth leaders do not copy from the net or tell lies. Now this reminds me of a Toastmaster who in the club level won his speech by telling that his mother expired out of jaundice. And then in the area level, he said his mother died of tuberculosis. And then in the division, he said his mother died of cancer. And I approached him, sir, I, I've been following you. you. You said your mother died of jaundice and then tuberculosis and then cancer. He said, who said my mother died? My mother is still living. <laughs> so don't tell lies. You can be imaginative. You can come up, you can invent things, but don't tell utter lies that will spoil your credibility. Then comes the very important part, 
the conclusion. Youth leaders, always remember that your opening may be forgotten, your body of speech may be forgotten, but the conclusion is something that lingers in the mind of the audience. They will carry, the, carry this with them. So the conclusion is very important. And how should be the conclusions? In the conclusion, we should reiterate the main. For example, if you are speaking about hard work, you reiterate, hard work pays, my dear friends. Be hard, work hard, you know? Things like that. You, you need to reiterate the main idea for powerful conclusion. And how can we do that? We can call for action. You leaders, do this, do that. You can also do one thing. Get the audience to stand up. And audience, please, pledge. That from today onwards, we will not do this, we will not do that. Something like this. Get the audience to pledge. And then finally, conclude smoothly. Don't look at the watch and, you know, conclude abruptly. Conclude smoothly. That's the preparation side. The preparation. Remember, you should always keep it simple and understandable. Because nobody is going to bring dictionary with them when you speak. You can come up with some flowery language, yes, here and there. But your entire speech should not have flowery language. Keep it simple, understandable. As I said, nobody is going to bring dictionaries with them. Remember that. Let's move on to the delivery part. In the delivery, the first thing is that you should be audible at all times. You should ensure that when, whenever you come to the podium, if you don't have the clip-on mic, you be loud enough so that the audience at the back can listen to you. Audibility, audible. In the beginning, when you come here, it's always a good idea to wear a smile. Because smile attracts people. Having said that, I'm reminded of a Toastmaster who used to smile. And in his speech he said, I was born in 1966. In 1967, my father passed away. And in 1967, my mother also passed away. His father passed away and his mother passed away and he's smiling. It doesn't work. It doesn't look good. 